goodness, it is so good to see you all here. We're back after Thanksgiving break. I hope you had an amazing Thanksgiving all across the campuses, uh, but we're back for the best time, the best day of the entire week. And for those of you who have no idea who I am, my name is Andrew. I'm one of the pastors here at Eagle Brook, but I really believe there's no better place that you could be than right here at Ground Zero. So I wanna say welcome to all of you here, but also at all of our campuses that are joining us. I'm so glad that you're here at Ground Zero. But tonight, I wanna start off with a question. How, if, don't shout it out, but can you think of the, the best thing someone has ever done for you? Can you think of that? Just think, picture that in your mind, the best thing someone has ever done for you. Maybe it was when your parents bought you your first iPhone. Maybe it was when they got you that puppy that you wanted. Maybe it was when they took you to Disney World with your family or when you got to go to the concert of your favorite music artist. Can you picture that moment? Can you remember that moment, the best thing somebody has ever done for you? Well, a couple weeks ago, I was hanging out with my wife and we, were, we decided to watch a movie, which is very rare for us because it takes forever to decide on which movie to actually watch. And it's because she loves romantic comedies. And, ugh. <laughs> and pretty much every single one of those rom-coms that, that are on Netflix, she's seen. Now me, on the other hand, I love Marvel movies. Okay. Obviously, by some noise, there's some Marvel lovers, though. But raise your hand if you love Marvel movies. Okay, so you're with me. You're absolutely with me. Well, earlier in that week, my wife had somebody, this woman, a woman came from Marvel, who works for Marvel, came to her work and spoke to her team uh, that entire day. And she got to learn from somebody from Marvel. But as she was leaving that talk... She had to admit to her boss that she had never seen one single Marvel movie. So while we're trying to decide what movie to watch that night, I tried to capitalize on the fact that she had just had to admit this to her boss. And so I decided on a couple different movies, and I was like, yeah, these are okay, but what about Spider-Man? Yeah. And so I, I, I was talking about these other few movies and saying, oh, maybe that might be okay, uh, but, you know, maybe, maybe Spider-Man, that could be great. And as we're talking, she says, let's watch Spider-Man. And I thought, who are you? Are you sure? And then she looked at me just straight, deadpan face and said, play the movie before I change my mind. And you guys, in that moment, I wanted to jump up and start screaming and celebrate because that moment was one of the best days of my marriage. For, I mean, it's been awesome. But that was one of the best days because my wife decided to watch one of my favorite types of movies. She decided in that moment to watch a Marvel movie. She set aside her preferences to watch my favorite type of movie. And after the movie finished, I looked at her and I just said, eh? And she said, actually, that wasn't too bad. And that was a huge win. But why do I tell you that? Why do I talk about that? It's because I've been learning that when you love someone or you want to show somebody that you love them, you do things for them. It could be simple, very simple. It could be major. Uh, you buy them gifts. You, buy, you give them attention. You watch Marvel movies with them. And it's not to get them to love you more or uh, to love you back, but it's just to express and remind them how much you love them. When we express love, we're giving up one thing for another. We give up our own comfort so that somebody else can be comfortable. We give up our preference to do what the other person wants. In other words, we sacrifice. We sacrifice for others when we love them. Now you're probably like, Andrew, why, why are we talking about that? What, what does that have to do with anything? Well, two weeks ago, we started a brand new series called Why We Worship. And Mark talked about what worship is and why we worship God for who he is. Now, most people, when they hear the word worship, they think singing with a band. And while that's a part of it, that's far from all of it. There's far more. Worship is anything we do for God, say about God, or sing to God that reminds us of who he is and what he's done for us. And the reality is that doing things for God or worshiping God requires sacrifice. So we're gonna dive into this, this the simple truth tonight that worship is sacrifice. 
And we get a great picture of this from the author of Romans. His name is Paul. And in Romans 12, he says this, And so, dear brothers and sisters, I plead with you to give your bodies to God because of all he has done for you. Let them be a living and holy sacrifice, the kind he will find acceptable. This is truly the way to worship him. So what's a living and holy sacrifice? Well, Paul is saying that in every aspect of our lives, every day in your ordinary lives, going to school, hanging out with your friends, while you're at hockey, basketball, volleyball, dance, wherever you are at home, out to eat, walking around with your brother, sister, mom, dad, or your friends, wherever, whenever, sacrifice. When you sacrifice, you're worshiping God. Worship is sacrifice. So tonight, we're gonna look at a passage of scripture in the book of Hebrews that I think gives us a roadmap as to what sacrifice looks like. So in Hebrews 13, it says this, therefore, let us offer through Jesus a continual sacrifice of praise to God, proclaiming our allegiance to his name, or in other words, just stand with Jesus, is what Paul is saying. Uh, And and don't forget to do good and to share with those in need. Those are the sacrifices that please God. So in this passage of scripture, the author is giving us three actions that we're gonna take a look at tonight and walk through that, that talk about sacrifice and how we can sacrifice. So as we go back to this, the first one that we're gonna talk about is is proclaiming our allegiance to his name. And I already said it, but our first action to sacrifice is to stand with Jesus, to just stand with Jesus. Now what that means is when we stand with Jesus, it's when we sacrifice our comfort to live in a way that's different from everyone. It's living like God has asked us to live. You may think right now, nailed it. I'm sitting in ground zero right now. I'm at church. I'm standing with Jesus. And it's more than that. Because it's easy to stand with Jesus when you're around other people that are also following and standing with Jesus. But it gets even more difficult when you're with your friends or when you're at practice with people who don't follow Jesus, who don't stand with him. But the great thing is we get to choose this. We get to choose this because Jesus himself sacrificed so that we could have a relationship with God and not be separated from him. When we stand with Jesus, we get forgiveness from our sins or or the things that we do that separate us from God. But we also are given power to make decisions that honor him. We're promised peace, hope, and joy that wouldn't be present without Jesus. It all comes when we stand with Jesus. Now, there was a time in middle school when I was hanging with a bunch of buddies, and we decided to watch a movie. And before we even started to watch this movie, I knew that it was a movie that I shouldn't be watching. There was nudity, there was language that I knew would be harmful to my mind and to my soul. And so as I'm sitting there with my friends, there was a time, I mean, I had to make a decision. But this was a time where I was also getting really serious about my faith, and I started making decisions that aligned with how Jesus wanted me to live. So as the movie started, the first thing that came to mind was a verse that I had been memorizing. And that verse just simply said, run from sexual immorality. And all that means is is that just get away, as far away as possible from wrong things or things that have those images in them. And so I had a choice. I could sit there, make excuses in my own mind and watch the movie, or I could stand with Jesus and do what I know that I should do, and that's run. Now, I had never done anything like this before. So I'm sitting there, And going through my mind, my heart racing, these questions are coming to me like, what are the guys gonna say? Are they gonna make fun of me? Am I ever gonna live this down if I walk out and never watch this movie with them? But in that moment, with those questions going through my brain, I stood up, I said, sorry guys, I gotta go. And I ran up the stairs and ran back to my house. I I felt so awkward doing that. I felt so weird and it was really difficult, but in that moment, I was choosing to stand with Jesus. I was choosing to worship God by standing with him and running from something that was harmful to me. Now, I don't always get it right. Even as an adult, even now, there's, there's moments where I don't get it right 
when I should stand with Jesus. But that night, I did. So how about you? What would standing with Jesus cause you to do differently? It may not be the most popular decision. It may be a huge bummer when in that moment to sacrifice, but speaking from experience, Ground Zero, it's the best decision to follow and to stand with Jesus. So that's the first action that we can take, is to stand with Jesus. Let's go back to our verse in Hebrews, and the author not only says uh, to stand with Jesus, but then he says, don't forget to do good. And so simply put, that's our next action to sacrifice, is to do good. How many of you have ever seen one of these? Yeah. I know, so many of you have probably even ridden one of these scooters But they, guys, they are the worst. They are the worst because they are not only the litter of downtown Minneapolis, they are everywhere. But on top of that, everyone who gets on one of those, everyone who I see, drives them so crazily. And they're on the sidewalk all over the place, going at ridiculous speeds and running into stuff and people, whatever it happens. But I was downtown one time, and I was down there for a running group. And we were out there, there was about 100 people that were spilling out uh, onto the sidewalk and into the alleyway we, where we start from. And as we're waiting to get started, listening to some announcements, I look down the sidewalk and I see this guy barreling down on one of those scooters as fast as he possibly could go. Now, I'm, I'm remind you, there's a huge group of people that are standing on this sidewalk. So instead of him getting off his scooter and nicely walking it through us or around us, or maybe even going to the road, he decides to gun it right through the middle of this huge crowd. Now, what he didn't realize is that the the little area that he chose to gun it through us was a patch of dirt. But he also didn't know that it had rained just a little bit earlier, so that patch of dirt wasn't really solid. So when the front wheel hit that patch of dirt, it stuck in the mud and tossed him right over the handlebars. He began, I mean, his backpack went off to the side, his phone went off to, sputtering off to the side, and then his shoulder and face hit the ground and skidded across the rough pavement right in front of us where he stopped. And in that moment, we all burst out laughing. No, I'm kidding. That would be awful. If you would laugh, that's awful. No, we didn't do that. We didn't laugh. No, in that moment, we jumped into action. A couple of guys helped him up. They, they grabbed his stuff, asked him if it was, he was okay, and we got him on his feet, and probably the only thing that he was feeling was embarrassment in that moment. But in, we could have called him an idiot. We could have made fun of him in that moment, but we just simply did something good. We did something simple. We did something good. And that's what worship can be, just doing something good. Every single day, we have opportunities to do something good. It doesn't have to be huge. It doesn't require money. You can do something good by simply helping someone and sacrificing a little time. It takes time to stop, to pause, and to help someone, to compliment someone. It takes time to pause and do the things that your parents ask you to do. When we do those things, we are worshiping God. When we do good, we are worshiping God. So that's the second action that we can take to sacrifice. So let's look one last time at this this verse in Hebrews because it says, don't forget to do good and to share with those in need. These are the sacrifices that please God. So our third action that we can take is to share with those in need. What do you need? Who's in need? I think oftentimes when I think about who's in need, I think about somebody who's standing on the street corner asking for money or asking for food or maybe kids in a third world country. Those are the people in need. But really, we're all in need. You, me, your leaders sitting in the room with you, everyone Every single one of us is in need. Well, what do people need? Well, I'll tell you what I need. I need forgiveness when I say something stupid to my wife or to my friends. I need peace 
when I'm facing into a situation or an outcome when I'm anxious about it and I can't even control it. I need hope when I watch my friends, my closest friends, fighting with something that seems hopeless, like cancer or depression. When we put our faith in Jesus, we're given hope, we're given peace, we're given a new life. God wants us to share those things then with other people. Ground Zero, this is a place where students can hear about those things. So I have a challenge for you. Share with those in need by inviting someone to come with you to Ground Zero. Inviting someone can be a sacrifice. Why? Because it's scary and it's uncomfortable. We don't know what they're going to say or we don't know what they're going to do when we invite them. Uh, But Ground Zero, would you be willing to sacrifice your own comfort to invite somebody from your school or from your team to come with you to Ground Zero? Maybe it's that friend who you know has parents going through a divorce right now. Maybe it's a friend who lost a grandparent or they're facing depression. If you love coming here and you miss it when you're not able to make it, chances are your friends are going to have that exact same feeling if they were to experience it here. People need what we've got. People need to experience hope, peace, and joy that comes with knowing and following Jesus. So would you share, would you share with those in need by inviting them to this place? I believe you can do it. Now, Ground Zero, worship is a sacrifice. It's a continual, never-ending thing. But we can sacrifice by standing with Jesus, doing good, and sharing with those in need. Would you pray with me? God, we are so thankful for a place like Ground Zero where we get to experience you and we get to worship you. But God, we we are so thankful for the sacrifice that you've made so that we can be in relationship with you and we can understand what it looks like to worship worship you for, for who you are and what you've done in our lives. So God, would you help us this week to sacrifice? to sacrifice by standing with you in moments that we need to stand with you, to do good and to share with those in need. God, we need your help in that. So help us do that and help us to to have the courage to invite somebody to, to come and experience Ground Zero. God, it's all these things that we lift up and we pray in Jesus' name, amen. You guys, thanks for coming. Have a fantastic week. We'll see you at Festival of Festiveness next week. Enjoy small groups.